thanks for checking this out. This is the second in a series of kind of backstory videos, I guess, uh, about a new music project I've been working on this year called The Way of Mountains and Desert. There's a link to part one of this series in the description box, but I don't think you really need to watch them in sequence. While I was working on this project, um, I ended up turning one of my little solo Native American flute songs into a great big 20-minute solo piece for a concert pianist. So this series is kind of about how and why that happened. Uh, the piece, the new piece, was actually commissioned by my good friend and colleague, Paul Barnes, was generously funded by a Hickson Lead grant. The first performances are happening this month, July, in Xanthi, Greece, and Houston, Texas. Now, in part one, I mentioned that the way of mountains and desert, like most of my music, is a music of place. So what does that mean, and uh, did I have a particular place in mind for this piece, and if so, why? And that's kind of what this video is about. I'm a lifer musician, and that means I've spent a fair amount of time on the road. And wherever I happen to be, if I have any time available at all, I really like to get outside and start to connect with whatever place I happen to be in. Now, partly this is about gratitude. I've been invited into a particular place, and all of the beings that are in that place are sharing their space with me for a while, so it's important to acknowledge that and thank them for their hospitality. Uh, and if I'm, I'm fortunate, I might even have enough time to really begin to connect with the place a little bit more deeply. Uh, now, of course, that's not going to happen in the same way as it might uh, for an indigenous person who was born and raised in that place and whose family has been there for millennia. Uh, but uh, sometimes really good things can happen, and um, sometimes the connection can even change me and become really meaningful. It's not unusual when I'm in a particular place or when I'm remembering being in a particular place for sound images to start kicking off in my brain, and sometimes songs will start falling out of my flute. And so when I say music of place, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of times my direct experiences and memories about particular places will set off music in my mind. So when Paul first approached me about this project, I started thinking about places right away. Places that might have special meaning for both of us. I mentioned in part one that Paul, in addition to being a wonderful pianist, is also a cantor in the Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, there's a, a history, a long history in Orthodoxy of people going off into the mountains and deserts uh, to seek union with God, whatever that might mean for them. And in fact, as we started discussing this project, Paul was already scheduled to have a retreat at an Orthodox monastery in the Sonoran Desert. And when I think of Sonoran Desert region, I immediately start thinking of all the wonderful indigenous uh, people that live there, the Diné, the uh, Thana Otham, the, the Hopi Pueblos, the Yaqui, a whole, whole bunch of wonderful people. It's a beautiful region. Now, if you look at modern maps, we're talking about parts of New Mexico and Arizona, and maybe over to Southern California, West Texas, North Mexico, those kinds of places. Now, I've had the good fortune to visit that region a lot of times over the years and uh, actually connected with parts of it that I considered moving there for a while. So uh, this seemed like it, it might be a, a really good fit for us. But as Paul and I talked more, it became really obvious that the orthodox sense of these areas is really different from the indigenous one. And uh, Paul and I wanted this project to be about music, not some futile attempt at comparative religion. So I decided to approach making uh, this new music essentially from an indigenous perspective. Uh, I'm not indigenous to that region, but I, but I am indig. And so I decided to make this piece a music of place in my usual way. Now, I can say that uh, as we talked about things further and as the project developed, Paul and I have, once we kind of burrowed under things a bit, we've come to an understanding that in, uh, in both of our traditions, um, creation is seen as essentially an expression of love and beauty, and we need to approach it and connect with it in that way. So if there is kind of a, a guiding idea behind much of this project, that is it. 
For me, music of place always starts with my own direct experiences of a particular place and my memories of those experiences. When I started thinking about the way of mountains and deserts, uh, I realized that a lot of my experiences and memories of those kinds of places are associated with flute playing. So it maybe is not surprising that even though this piece was supposed to be for solo piano, the first music that actually arrived came by way of the flute. So what are some of the memories that uh, became special for this piece? Well, I, I remember water reflecting off a canyon stream and, and dancing on a sandstone cliff. I remember one of my flutes drying out very quickly and cracking after being in the dry air for less than a week. And I remember fires threatening the sacred blue lake. I remember playing at a cliffside and seeing a raven, you know, kind of come up on a thermal out of the canyon. Uh, and I just remember so much life, so many wonderful beings that had found ways not only to survive, but to thrive in a, a, an ecosystem that many others would have found way too challenging. Sometimes poetry and visual artworks can also set off melodies and rhythm patterns and even structural ideas uh, for, for music. And uh, there are some indige poets from this region in particular that were very important for this piece, very helpful. Um, I, I know I've talked about some of them in some of my videos about uh, indige writers, but hey, they're all worth talking about more than once. So maybe the most uh, important uh, of uh, poets for this particular project was Ophelia Zapata. I'm going to apologize ahead of time for my pronunciation of tribal names. I try it, I practice, but I'm really not good at it, and languages are not my thing. But, but uh, Ophelia Zapata is Thona Otham and is a poet and uh, one of the world's leading linguists as well. This volume is called Where Clouds Are Formed, and I'd just like to share a couple of brief excerpts. It has been said before, these mountains will not listen if we simply speak words to them. They will only hear us if we come with melody, rhythm, pitch, and harmony. To these circling mountains, we must speak with voices, in songs, rhythmic speeches, orations, and prayers. We must be prepared with repetition, a singular undisturbed beat. That is the way of mountains. This is what they want to hear. And I also really loved this little excerpt. The humming, buzzing, clicking of water life, the miracle of desert streams on smooth boulders. So Ophelia Zapata, where clouds are formed. I will also apologize for my poetry reading. I'm a musician. I'm not a a, a, a poetry reader reciter, but um, I wanted you to hear some of these things because they meant a lot to me for this piece. Uh, Simon J. Ortiz from Acoba, Acoma Pueblo, and uh, this is from a, an omnibus edition called Woven Stone that has several of his uh, magnificent volumes of poetry in them. I have never seen a mountain that has stood so clearly in my mind when I have needed to envision my home, when loneliness for myself has overcome me. The mountain has occurred. Now I see it share its being with me, praying. Lovely. Simon J. Ortiz from his omnibus volume, Woven Stone. Well, my very favorite younger indige poets right now is uh, Tommy Pico uh, from the Kumuyai people in uh, what's now called Southern California. And this is just a little fragment of a line uh, from his volume Nature Poem, uh, which is one of my favorite works of poetry ever of all time. Uh, and uh, I, th I think this is just such a, a beautiful little snippet. This is the difference. Some see objects in the earth where I see lungs. So this is uh, the second volume in a series of four volumes of Tommy Pico poetry that all belong together. And I, I'll put a link to uh, one of my videos on native writers that I think talks about those in a little bit more detail. 
And then uh, finally, of course, uh, Leslie Marmon Silco from Laguna Pueblo. Um, can't leave Ms. Silco out of any discussions of writers from this region. And uh, again, just a little fragment uh, of a poem, Out of Love for This Earth, Cottonwood, Sandstone, and Sky. It's an excerpt from her wonderful book, Storyteller. All right, so those are a few of the, the poets that really ended up being quite meaningful for me uh, while working on this project. There are a few painters, too, and I'll try to share some of their work, too, as, as we go along. Everyone has their own way of doing things, and I'm not saying that my way will work for anybody else, but if you see anything here that looks intriguing, hey, go for it. Try it out. Even your backyard can give you a beautiful music of place if you simply are attentive and connect and listen Listen, listen. Now, the next video in this series is going to be about the flute song that uh, eventually became the big piano piece, The Way of Mountains and Desert. We'll look at the song and uh, look at some of the materials that helped make the piano piece. So check back for that. And of course, I'll continue to post uh, videos on native flute playing and flute playing tips. Uh, also, uh, continuing to, to work on music videos and new music content that's exclusive to my channel. So if you uh, enjoy all of that, please hit those like and subscribe buttons uh, so that, number one, you'll be first to know about these things. Uh, but it also really helps to get the word out. Maybe you can share some of these videos with your friends or with your flute circle the next time you get together. You can also visit my website, Ron Warren Music. There's a link in the description box to find out more stuff about what's going on in my little corner of the musical world as an indigenous musician. Uh, love to hear your comments and questions, so if you have anything you want to share, anything you want to know more about, uh, please do that and I will try to get back to you or address it in uh, a future video if nothing else. So I guess that's about it for me for this time and I look forward to seeing you again soon.